Hello, and thank you for taking the time to review this preoperative spine surgery educational video. What we will cover today are such topics as understanding your spinal procedure, preparation for your surgery, day of surgery expectations, discharge instructions, and the recovery process. Your spine is composed of seven cervical, 12 thoracic, and five lumbar vertebrae. At the bottom of your spine is your sacrum and coccyx. Your spine provides strength and stability to the skeletal structure and serves as a passageway for the spinal cord and the nerves that travel along the entire length of the spine. Some of the more common back surgeries are as follows. A discectomy is the creation of a window in part of the outer ring of the disc. This allows for removal of a portion of the disc, releasing the pressure on the nerve. A laminectomy is the creation of a window in the vertebrae. This allows more room for nerves and releases pressure on the nerve. A fusion is a graft placed between two or more vertebrae. This provides stability to the spine. Oftentimes, screws or other hardware are used to maintain stability while healing occurs. When preparing for your surgery, here are some general health guidelines to follow in the weeks leading up to your procedure. Focus on good nutrition. Take your daily medication as directed by your physician. Discuss with your physician any nutritional and or herbal supplements that you are taking. Some medications may increase your risk of bleeding and your physician may direct you to stop those 7 to 10 days prior to your surgery. Avoid alcoholic beverages. Stop smoking. When preparing your home for discharge, make sure any safety modifications are addressed prior to your surgery. This will decrease your risk for falls or injury. Some general household modifications to consider are the following. Move electrical and telephone cords away from walkways. Identify an appropriate sitting surface in all rooms Use chairs with armrests. Avoid low surface or overstuffed sofas, chairs, or recliners. Know the whereabouts of your pet. And remove throw rugs or small area rugs. If you have stairs, replace any worn stair treads. If feasible, install stable handrails on both sides of the stairs. Stairs and hallways should be brightly lit. Add night lights where possible. In the bathroom, you may wish to install grab bars in the bathtub. For increased traction, install skid resistant strips in your bathtub or shower pan and a rubber mat in front of the bathtub. Your therapist may recommend a raised toilet seat. Remove any mats or small rugs in front of the sink or the commode. In the bedroom, have a lamp and a phone within reach of the bed. Keep a clear path from the bedroom to the bathroom. Always sit while getting dressed. Use night lights wherever possible. Make sure that any bedspreads, duvet covers, blankets, clothing, long drapes, and your pet are not in your walking path. In the kitchen, store frequently used items at waist level and less frequently used items in higher cabinets. Making meals and freezing them beforehand will reduce the time spent on meal preparation. By doing this before the surgery, meals can be better planned from a nutritional standpoint. There are some things you may want to consider packing for your hospital stay. You may want to bring some personal care items such as toiletries to the hospital with you. Feel free to bring clothing from home for physical therapy. Shorts or exercise pants that are easy to get on and off work well. If you would be more comfortable in your own pajamas, please bring them with you for your stay. Just be certain they are loose fitting. You might want to bring a lightweight rope as well. Bring important contact numbers with you along with a list of the medications that you take on a regular basis. 
Remember to put medications on the list that you were asked to stop taking in preparation for your surgery. Your medication list should include the medication name and strength, the dose that you take and how often you take it, the last date and time you took the medication. Do not, however, bring any medications from home. The hospital will provide you with the medications ordered by your physician. The only exception would be if your physician asks you to bring an inhaler or eye drops from home. Contacts may be difficult for you at first, so if you have eyeglasses, please bring those in. Make sure you bring a case to keep them in at night. If you have a brace or collar and were asked to bring it, make certain it comes to the hospital with you. You will not need cash or credit cards during your stay, so make sure you leave them along with any valuables at home. Your spine education booklet is a good resource for while you're in the hospital. Bring it along as a refresher of instructions. Prior to your surgery, your physician may order one or more of the following tests. Blood work, EKG, chest x-ray, medical clearance. The day before your surgery, you will be asked not to eat or drink anything after midnight. This means no gum, mints, sips of water, or coffee. The only exception is if you have been instructed to take one of your medications the morning of surgery. If this is the case, take it with the smallest sip of water possible to take the medication. You may brush your teeth the morning of surgery. Please do not put on any makeup, lotions, or perfumes on the morning of your surgery. On the day of your surgery, you should plan to arrive two hours prior to your surgery time. You will be directed to the surgical waiting area. When they are ready for you in pre-surgery area, someone will escort you there. In the pre-surgery area, you will change into your hospital gown, go over your consent documentation, review your medical history, including that list of medications from home, have a physical assessment, speak with an anesthesiologist, and have an IV started. During your surgery, your family may wait for you in the surgical waiting area. There is a patient monitor in this waiting area. It allows your family to monitor your progress and see when you move from the pre-surgical area to the surgery area, from the surgery area to the recovery room. After the surgery is complete, the surgeon will speak to your family. Time in the recovery room may vary. When you awake in the post-op recovery room, you will notice many things happening at once. You will hear monitors beeping as nurses are monitoring your heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen level, and temperature. Nurses will check your incision. Your incision may have a drain coming from it and ice on the area for comfort. You will have a Foley catheter, which is rubber tubing to drain your bladder. This will be removed early in your hospital stay. You will still have your IV. On your legs, you will likely have TED hose, which are like compression stockings. Sequential compression devices, these are like leg warmers that gently squeeze and release your lower legs. They are there to help prevent blood clots. You may also be wearing a brace or a collar. Some pain after surgery is normal. The nursing staff will assist you in keeping your pain at a tolerable level for you. You will be asked to use a pain scale to rate your pain, zero being no pain and 10 being the most pain you've ever experienced. This scale assists the nursing staff in knowing how best to manage your pain. Some of the pain relief options after surgery may include a PCA or patient controlled analgesic. This is a button that you push when you experience an increase in your pain. This button delivers a set amount of pain medication through your IV. The nurse may administer pain medication directly through your IV. You may take oral pain medication. The pain scale also assists the nurses in knowing how effective the intervention for your pain has been. If your pain has gone from 5 to 3 after receiving pain medication or an intervention, then we know the intervention is working for you. If there is no decrease in your pain, then a different intervention may be needed. When you are ready to be transferred from the recovery room, you will be transferred to the nursing unit. Your family may visit with you on the nursing unit. You will meet members of your healthcare team and be oriented to your room. You will be shown how to contact your nurse, how to operate your bed, and television. Your pain will continue to be managed using the zero to 10 pain scale as a guide. 
You will be instructed on deep breathing exercises, including the use of your incentive spirometer. Remembering to breathe deeply and expand your lungs can prevent pneumonia as a surgical complication. Use your spirometer as directed. Your diet and activities will be directed by your physician. Remember, even though the sun goes down, the nurses will continue monitoring you. They will take your vital signs, they will ask your pain level, and they will ask you to take your nice deep breaths throughout the night. Although spine postoperative complications are a rare occurrence, we believe that education and compliance is the key to prevention. Blood clots, also known as DVTs, are a potential complication with any surgery. Blood clots can ca be caused by prolonged bed rest or inactivity. Blood that is moving is less likely to clot. So to prevent blood clots, it is important to take your anticoagulant while in the hospital as ordered. Keep the sequential compression devices on your legs while you are lying in bed. Participate with physical therapy. The signs and symptoms of a DVT may include pain in the back of your calf that comes and goes, a dull ache in the calf when walking. The calf may be warm to the touch and reddened. If you feel you are experiencing any of these symptoms, it is important that you tell someone in your healthcare team right away. Please remember to call for assistance prior to attempting to get out of bed. You will still be attached to many things such as your IV and your sequ sequential compression devices. You may be taking pain medications that may put you at risk for falling. There's a whiteboard in your room. It will have the number to call for your nurse. There are also buttons on the side rails that you can push to call for your nurse as well. Avoid bending. If you drop something, call for help as well. In the days following your surgery, you will work with the hospital staff to walk, exercise, and perform activities of daily living. Dressing changes will be performed by your physician at his preference. We will continue to manage your pain, and a case manager will visit you and discuss your discharge plan and potential equipment needs. Your health care team will educate you on the use of walkers, canes or crutches, the use of back or neck braces, and proper positioning. Here are some basic but important precautions to follow after having a spine surgery. No bending, lifting, or twisting. Wear your brace or collar as instructed. Avoid sitting for prolonged periods. When getting in and out of bed, you will perform a log roll. A log roll is performed by moving your shoulders, hips, and knees together to either your left or your right side in bed. Once on your side, you will lower your legs at the same time that you push with your arms to lift your upper body. When getting back to bed, the above process is reversed. When considering your discharge, the expected length of stay is determined by your progress. This progress will be assessed by your healthcare team. Case management will assist you with your discharge plans and your equipment needs. Your healthcare team will review the following spine precautions and special instructions. Maintain proper lifting techniques. No bending or twisting. Keep your back straight. Limit sitting in an upright position to less than 30 minutes at a time. Perform log rolling when getting in and out of bed. And do not lie on your stomach. Further instructions will be provided at your follow-up physician appointment. After your discharge, and when recovering at home, here are some things to keep in mind. Keep your incision clean and dry. Shower with mild soap and do not put any creams or lotions on your incision. Take your medication as prescribed. Progressively increase your activities as directed. Sit in a supportive chair with arms. Keep your walking areas free of clutter and use your brace or collar as instructed. If you develop a fever above 101 degrees, 
pain in your back, not relieved by medication, unusual redness, heat, or drainage from your incision site, new numbness or tingling, or experience changes in bowel or bladder habits, call your doctor. Call 911 if you experience chest pain, difficulty breathing, or a sudden inability to move your arm or your leg. Thank you for viewing this presentation. We hope you found it helpful and informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Spine Coordinator at area code 805-370-4694 or email at spine.losrobles at hcahealthcare.com. Your physician has requested that you fill out the questionnaire located on our Spine webpage after you finish this video.